Hello, and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Karen Snape with Virginia Cooperative Extension, and today I'm bringing you the second half of my series on simple tools to measure your forest. If you haven't seen the first 15 minutes on simple tools to measure your forest, I'd like to recommend it. We talked about heights, lengths, and distances, and today we're going to talk about diameters, areas, and volumes. We'll get started with diameter. Going back to basic geometry lessons, if you just take a measuring tape and wrap it around a tree, you're actually measuring the circumference of that tree. But foresters record the size of trees based on their diameter, the distance across the circle. Now, you can just take a regular measuring tape, measure the circumference of a tree, and then divide by pi, 3.14. The foresters have diameter tapes. These will typically have, you know, one side that looks like regular normal inches, and then another side that has inches that are about three times the size of a normal inch. And so this is actually, when you wrap it around the tree, it already has pi figured into it, and it's measuring the diameter, even though you wrap it around the circumference. These are really handy because they're really small, really easy to fit into a pocket. But most of the time in my career as a forester, I was already carrying my, my logger's tape, and the logger's tape also has diameter equivalents of circumference. Another tool that foresters use to measure diameters is a Biltmore stick. It's wonderful in its, its elegance, really, because you can measure heights and diameters um, on this stick, and you can also measure logs on this stick. So it has a side which is just, they call this diameter of the log, and it's just regular inches, again, running across the top here. But most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to be measuring the diameter of trees, and for that, you use the tree side of the stick. And if you look at this tree side of the stick, the inches, first of all, they don't really look like normal inches at all, but then they also, get smaller as they go up. So this inch between 39 and 40 is smaller than the inch over here between 10 and 11. So the most important thing when using this stick is to make sure that if you're measuring a tree, you're measuring using the tree side of the stick. So the first tool I'm gonna to use is just a regular measuring tape, the kind you might have at home. So remember, we're going to measure this tree at four and a half feet off of the ground. This tree is about 40 and a half inches in circumference. So you would divide that by three in order to get the diameter. So 40 divided by three, about 13. And we're going to use the side with the really big inches, the three inch inches. Again, we're going to measure this at standard height. So there you can see about 12.9. So the, uh, the D tape has a little bit of an extra tail on it. Make sure you're measuring from the line, the zero line, not from the end of the tape. All right, now we're going to try this again using the Biltmore stick. So again, you want your eyeball to be about 25 inches away from the tree. So you can actually use the log side of the stick to see what 25 inches is. Or you can use a North Carolina stick that's 25 inches long. We're measuring it at four and a half feet off the ground. And get our eyeball 25 inches from the tree. And then make sure that you're using diameter of tree side, which is the one with the walking inches. I cannot get the camera 25 inches away from the tree and still hold the stick against the tree. So the numbers aren't going to be right for you, but we can see how it's supposed to work. So we line up the edge of the stick with the edge of the tree on the left, and then we look on the right to see where, right there, where the edge of the tree lines up with the stick. And as I guess you can see, that's 12. So, so now that we know both the diameter and the height of trees, we learned last time how to measure heights, 
we can estimate the volume of the tree. And there are many, many formulas that people have worked out to estimate the volume of a tree trunk. And uh, there's three main ones, the Doyle, the Scribner, and the International or International Quarter. But most of us don't actually use a formula. We use a chart because it's a lot simpler. And one of the charts is printed right here on your Biltmore stick. You can see here, this is a quarter or quarter inter international or international quarter rule. And it's form class 78. So the international in particular has a lot of different versions, right? You're just gonna use the same one for every tree in your forest. The important thing though, is to make sure that you are using the same formula or the same charts as anybody else who's measuring those trees. So if, for example, you are interested in selling timber and somebody else is interested in buying timber and you're using different rules or different formulas, you're gonna come up with different answers for how much volume is out there. And the way this works is you look at the number of logs, which is something that we learned to measure last time. And you look at the diameter, which we just learned to measure. And so you see, if I have a 12 inch log and it's our 12 inch diameter tree and it's only one log tall works up to be 56 board feet a board foot is a piece of wood that is one foot by one foot by one inch and so the way that we move from measuring individual trees to measuring forests is by taking samples so you might take a sample plot that is a tenth of an acre, you could take many of those, you could average them, and then multiply it by 10, and you would have a per acre statistic. Now, you can make a square or rectangular plot, but in forestry, we tend to use circular plots. So you stick your loggers tape in the ground with the nail, you go out the correct radius for your plot, and that's how you make your plot. So if you're gonna do a 10th acre plot, the radius of that plot is 37.2 inches. If you're gonna do a 20th of an acre, that's 26.3 inches. Now you might reasonably want to know, well, what's best, right? And there's no one right answer for that. If your forest is reasonably consistent, like say a planted pine stand where all of the trees are similar, you won't need to do as many or as large as if your forest is highly diverse. Okay, now for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do a 100th acre plot. That's a radius of 11.8 feet. And I'm gonna make this the plot center. And I'm gonna go out and around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna count all of the trees that are within our 100 acre plot. We're gonna count them, we're gonna record the species, and we're gonna record the diameter. So this tree is in because it is within 11.8 feet of plot center. It is a box elder. I'm gonna call that 23 inches in diameter. Back to 11.8. Let me keep on going. This tree is out because it's more than 11.8 inches from the center of the plot. We don't count it, we don't measure it, we just ignore it and keep on going. So we go the whole way around the circle and at the end we have a count for the number of trees per hundredth of an acre and also we know the species and the size of those trees. So you would multiply by 100 to find out trees per acre. I'm gonna show you one more thing, which is double trunks and trees that are uh, just on the border. So here we have a double trunked tree. And generally speaking, if it is split below four and a half feet, our standard measuring height, then we count it as two different trees. And if it splits above four and a half feet, it's one tree. So we would count this as two trees and one of those could be in and one of those could be out. If we were doing a 50th acre plot, which is a radius of 16.7 inches, you would see that 16.7 inches lands on this tree. 
and we generally say that if your uh, radius lands before the center of the tree, we count that as out. The center of the tree is out, less than half of the tree is in. But if it comes further and more than half of the tree is in or the center of the tree is in, then we call it in. The next thing we're gonna talk about is basal area. Basal area can be a little bit hard to understand, but it's the amount of space taken up by the trees in cross section. So on this paper, there are three trees and they are each taking up in cross section this much area. Basal area is if we take this much area and combine it. And in this case, we get 18. So the basal area for this piece of paper is 18 square inches. This is a measurement of how dense the forest is, how much room there is for more growth. Now, when we took our fixed radius plot, that was our plot where we knew what the radius was and we knew that it was a 10th of an acre or a 50th of an acre, or we measured the diameter of all of those trees. And so since we know the diameter, we can figure out the area and we can add those up. And now we know what the basal area is. Of course, we have to multiply that by our factor. If it was a hundredth acre plot, we multiply it by a hundred. We have two different tools that we can use to measure that. The angle gauge is used at a distance of 24 inches from your eye. Um, and it almost always comes on a chain. If you put the end in your mouth, that's 24 inches. And then you look through it. You look at each of the trees that you think might be in your variable radius plot. And in a variable radius plot, the bigger a tree is, the further away it can be and still count. It's some mathematical magic and these tools were designed taking that complicated math that I don't understand into account. So this is the angle gauge that I got out of the supply closet at work. And it has um, an area for a five factor, a 10 factor, a 20 factor, and even a 40 factor uh, angle gauge on it. And so you only would really look at one of these layers. And so you might wanna take like maybe some masking tape or something and cover up the ones that you're not using. So it's easier just to look at say the 10. You look through the angle gauge and if the tree appears to be completely within the slot, then you do not count that tree. That tree is either too small or too far away to be counted. But let's say that the tree is bigger, maybe the size of my arm, and it does completely fill the angle gauge. Then it is counted as being in the plot. And you just count that as one, another tree that's in, and you count those, and then you multiply by whatever your factor was, in this case, 10. So if there are five trees that are in, then your basal area is 50. 50 square feet per acre. The colleague who taught me how to use this uh, volunteered the fact that his thumb is an 11. So he holds his thumb out and he multiplies by 11 and gets the basal area. I also took this little piece of cardboard and I measured the 10 and I figured out that the 10 was about 19 millimeters. So I made my own angle gauge out of cardboard. We can see that that tree would be in because it completely fills the slot. This tree is also in, it completely fills that 10 slot. But this tree is out. It does not completely fill that 10 slot. So you would go all the way around in a circle and you would count how many trees are in and then you would multiply that by 10 and that is square feet per acre of basal area. Here's the prism, the wedge of glass. Uh, this is a 10 factor prism. And the way this works is that when you hold it up and look through it, the thing that you're looking at will look like it is offset. And if the tree, the section, the slice of tree that is offset still overlaps with the rest of the tree, then the tree is considered in and you count it. 
if that little tree is moved far enough away that it's not overlapping anymore, it is considered to be out and you don't count it. And again, when you're done, you take your count and you multiply it by 10 and that's your basal area. So here we are looking at this tree again and you can see how the prism causes a chunk of the tree to be displaced. It looks like it has been shifted out to the left. But as you can see, it still overlaps with the main part of the tree. So we would count that tree as in. Now, interestingly, when we're using the angle gauge, we are the plot center and we turn and move the angle gauge so that it's always 24 inches in front of us. With the prism, it is the center and we try to hold it in the same spot and rotate around it. This tree is out and would not be counted because the piece of trunk that is displaced by the prism does not overlap with the rest of the tree. So with that, I've shown you all of the tools that I have to measure your forest. I hope you've enjoyed this 15 minutes in the forest. Please join us in two weeks for where Bill Worrell will have another video for you.